CICD is one of the easiest things you can do to make your life as a developer a hundred times easier. A few years ago, I started implementing this into my projects and it makes a world of difference for your developer experience and is also for your shipping experience. What I want to do today is I want to go over, first of all, what CICD is, second of all, why you should care, and third of all, I want to show you how easy it really is to implement. With a lot of providers these days, it's as simple as just making a new branch and it works. Providers like Vercel, Netlify, Railway, and Heroku all have built-in integration for CICD pipelines, and you don't even have to go and set up all these fancy TOML files and configs and use like Jenkins or something like that. It just works out of the box. So I want to show you how to do that. So the first thing I want to do is sort of motivate this by showing you what a bare bones workflow looks like. This is what you're going to get if you just create a Git repo and then you initialize it with a main, you pull it down to your dev machine and you work on it like that. So all you're doing is pushing and pulling your main branch up and down from Git. And then when it's time to deploy, you manually deploy from your dev machine, maybe package it into a zip file and upload it to your production servers and deploy it that way. This is how most devs start out learning and most devs do their first deploys which is great and it works, but the problem is this doesn't scale. So that's where CICD kind of comes in, is how do we make this better? How do we not have to push from our dev machine, but instead push from up here, turn our source control into this single source of truth that will handle all of our deployments, builds, and tests. So what CICD is, is CICD is continuous integration slash continuous deployment. And I'll show you what that looks like right here. So this is a CI/CD workflow I mocked up. It's very similar to the ones that my company uses for our, our projects. And effectively what we have is we start with the dev machine. Down here you have your local changes, your VS code, whatever you want. You make your changes, edit it. Once you're done, you send it up to GitHub and it will be stored and managed there. Then you can push and pull up and down as you naturally would. But where the changes come in is here. So instead of deploying out to these production servers from our dev machine, we actually send them to a CI/CD provider. That could be GitHub Actions, Vercel has built in CI/CD, Netlify does, tons of other providers do. There's actually third-party tools you could use like Jenkins or um, I'm blanking on the names of some other ones, I'll put them up here. So then what you see right here is your CI/CD provider. In this case, I'm just gonna use Vercel as the example. That's the example I'll do after this. And what's gonna happen now is anytime we have a push or up to our GitHub, or we do a pull request to main or something like that, this CICD will get fired. So it'll tell, okay, whenever there's a push or a pull request, we're gonna do something here. Then when we get in here, it's going to pick, okay, what do I do? So when there's a change to main, so maybe you merge your code into main via a pull request, it's gonna see, okay, there have been changes to main, I need to now fire this workflow. And what that workflow will do is just take your code and it'll send it to production. So it'll take everything that's in main, it'll build it, test it, run it for you, and put it out there. And then another workflow you could have is whenever you have a push to your dev branch. So say you've got your devs, they're working in the dev branch, doing all their stuff. Whenever they push at the end of the day, you can then take that code up here run it through the CI CD, run tests on it. So if you have a larger project, you're most likely gonna have some end-to-end -end testing, some unit testing, whatever. Those tests will get run on it naturally and then they'll get passed down into this preview environment. So after it passed these tests, it will fire at the preview environment, which will take all of your code and put it into a sort of private, um, well, preview website. And this is really, really useful for larger projects because especially if you're testing out a new feature, say you're building out a new page for your site or you're adding authentication or you're adding a new user or whatever, you need to be able to test these features first. And it's better to test these in a live environment than it is to test them just locally. So you can set up all these tests and then you run this preview environment, you can preview it out there. And then once you say, okay, this works great. Now you make that pull request and that code this fires because we made a pull request to main and suddenly our code is in production. So let me show you how that works. Okay, so for this example, the first thing we're gonna do is just start with a nice empty Git repo. This is how all projects start. And from here, we are just going to clone it and then we're gonna bring it down to our machine. So if you look at the diagram, we started here, we're gonna bring it down to the dev machine, make some changes, send it back up here and attach it to a CI CD. So when we do that, I'm gonna go in here, which is CD project. Uh, docs slash project slash s uh, yeah projects is fine now let's do git clone we'll put this in here okay so now we have our project opened up in vs code now we just need to actually put something in it so i'm just going to do create next app something very basic yes let this install um 
whoops, I'm going to actually do this differently. I'm going to say create next latest dot. So I want to do it inside this directory. Then we need to remove the readme. Now we can go ahead and do this. So we create our next app. It's going to go ahead and strap it with all the boilerplate. And then we'll make a small change, then push it up to our um, source control. So I'm just going to go ahead into our pages, index.tsx. I'm going to say um, title is going to be PI CD demo. And then our welcome to. All right, there we go. So very basic changes. And if we do npm run dev, and we open this up, works exactly how you'd expect. So now let's kind of look at how you would put this in production. So the first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna do git add a commit dash m, just creating it, don't really care what the commit message is. All right, it's been written to our source control. And now we can go back to uh, git and we can say, all right, this works, we'll refresh it. It's here, let's put this in production. So we're gonna do Vercel, I'm gonna go to, um, whoops, let me go here, and then let me just add a new one, new project, continue with GitHub, and then we did CICD example. Perfect, so it picks it up. So just CICD example, don't need any different settings here, we can just deploy it as you would expect. So it's building, let it run and do its thing. But while it's building, I'm gonna actually set something up. So this is building as we speak. I want to create a new branch that I can do all my dev work in. We made main and main is what's gonna be shipped to our end users, but I don't wanna be constantly editing that in case I start a feature, but then I don't finish it. And I don't want to push that up to my source control and then it automatically gets deployed. So I'm going to do git branch dev. This will create a new branch called dev. I'll do git checkout dev. And now I'm on my dev branch. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add, I'm going to push this up to my source control. So you just have to do git push. And then it's going to tell me exactly what I need to put. So I just need to push to dev. Perfect. So now that this is working, we can go back here. And we have our example up in, here it is, out in prod. Works perfect. Good stuff. So let's see what happens when we edit this. So now I'm going to go down to my dev function here, and I am going to just make a slight change. So I'm going to say CICD demo from dev. And we're going to do git add a git m. Okay, so now that we have created this basic example, we are going to go back to our Git and we're gonna get this notification that we have a new push less than a minute ago. This won't always show up, so the way you would actually get to this normally is you go to pull requests and a new pull requests and we're gonna be comparing dev to main. So we see here, we have this change, now let's create a pull request. So we added the message, we create this, and now we're gonna see right here, some checks have not been created. So this actually passed really fast because this is a tiny project, so building it takes like two seconds. So you can see in the build step right here, I didn't have to do anything and Vercel just set this up for me. So if you look at this diagram right here, what actually just happened is we built to our dev branch on here, pushed it to our source control, and then on a push, so it was a push, the CICD provider was like, okay, there were changes to dev. Now it's going to run through this workflow. I don't have any tests uh, defined, so there were no tests run. So it ran through this workflow, and now we are in our preview environment. So we go back to right here, you'll see this is CICD example git dev. So this is actually the development version. This isn't the real one. So you can see CICD demo from dev, but then if we go back to our real one, and we go to the actual URL, it's not deployed yet. So we have this preview that we can now use to, if you had client work, show it to the client first, make sure it works. But then once we're all satisfied with how this works, we can do a pull request to main, which is what we opened up here. We merge this, confirm the merge. And now when we go back to this diagram, we just had a pull request to main 
that we executed and it's going to see okay i now have changes to main so we go back to our cicd example right here and go to deployments it's automatically deploying for us so right here it's telling us okay it's building this because it had these changes happen and then give it a two seconds or so and it will look like this perfect and now cic demo from dev so that's it this is what CICD can do for you. There are tons more things you can do on top of it. You can add custom providers, you can do custom scripts and actions. But for the basics of your projects, even if you're just doing something really simple like a tutorial, I can't recommend this enough. It removes a lot of headache and can really improve the quality of your code and the quality of, well, your dev experience. It'll make your life easier. So yeah, that's about it. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.